Hello, hello. My name is April Malone with Yes, I Work From Home, and this is the podcast. Today, I have Emily Braun from Toronto, Canada with me. Thank you for coming, Emily. Hello, April. I'm really happy to see you, to connect with you, uh, to speak uh, with your followers, with your people on, on your circle, for everyone who is interested in this exciting topic. Yes, thank you so much. Emily is an expert in international travel, and she is kind of niching down into working with people from more of the retirement years um, who might want to retire in an international um, situation. Um, but I think with the, the changes from the last year, uh, with the pandemic shutting things down, she has definitely broadened a little bit into more of the digital nomad uh, working folks as well. Emily, do you want to just go ahead and share some of your journey over time? Where did you start from? And I'm going to come back and kind of narrow in on a few questions as you go along. Okay. Uh, when I'm starting in regards to remote work, you mean? <laughs> yes, actually, you know what? We can do both. Um, you can choose if you want to start with how you started with remote work now or how, where you started from the very beginning. I know you've had a few different careers over the span of your lifetime. Uh, yes, let's start from my uh, historical uh, background. Uh, <laughs> so I was born years ago in a country which does not exist anymore. It's a former Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. uh, I was born in a country like Independent Republic Moldova. It's what is now independent. I lived in Independent Republic of Ukraine, a little bit in Russia. Uh, obviously, for many of you, maybe that my first uh, language is Russian, even I'm not ethnically Russian. Uh, but it's uh, shaped my background. And back in Soviet Union, I've had experience uh, working in scientific re research. I have engineering degree. And in Ukraine, I was shortly working as environmental uh, engineer. But my life is folded this way that I immigrated several times. So my first immigration was to Israel in 90s. And I changed my profession again under the circumstances. And I was working in financial sector uh, for several um, Israeli banks. And my wow. second immigration, like full, complete immigration, was uh, to Canada. Uh, and for 24 years, I was working in Canada as uh, IT consultant. So I changed drastically my professional direction again. Oh and it's, it is what my life about was. But even... Uh, working as IT consultant, I happened uh, to work for more than 18 organizations over the 20 years in Toronto. So I even didn't realize, but I had um, naturally kind of this um, um, tendency to work for different companies and move uh, from company to company. So my probably mentality shaped uh, like it shaped my out outlook to the world and work um, opportunities. Uh, so, and I always like to travel. So travel, it was my hobby, my passion. And three years ago, actually earlier, I opened uh, Travel Passion. It's my, it was my boutique small own company uh, when I was still working as a IT consultant, as I I decided, okay, I would like to, to have it and, you know, grow this business and maybe in retirement, you know, I will enjoy it in a full life. I will travel and I will have this uh, travel business. Uh, so, it, by the way, in Ontario, you cannot just decide and do it. I went through the courses. I get certification. I was working under host uh, uh, official travel company, actually American company, with uh, branching in uh, Ontario. But last year, like when pandemic um, started, the first time in many years, I had time to be at home. Uh, and both of my businesses were shut down. So my contract, IT contract was uh, terminated and the end of March in my travel uh, program, whatever I was working and I was working for retirees, creating discovery lifestyle tours for retirees who are looking for retirement places. And I've had a couple of tours just uh, in Mexico and uh, Portugal and Spain, they were shut down. It was exactly the time when I was ready to, you know, to fly. Um, oh. uh, so when I was sitting at home, looking around, reading what's going on, 
uh, I was thinking how I really can utilize my knowledge, my experience, uh, you know, working, my connection in the different uh, countries abroad, which I already, you know, developed over the last years. And I noticed that uh, Americans started to run from United States. <laughs> Uh, being part of expat uh, groups in Facebook. And the biggest, like my first country I'm working with and still is Mexico and other countries with uh, really, uh, you know, developed expat communities. It's a place where many retirees and digital nomads are living uh, already for years. I would say that mm -hmm. Mexico uh, is a known digital nomad hub Mm, so I noticed that Americans, even not digital nomad per se, like originally, started to move uh, to places uh, I have interest uh, and connection with. Mm -hmm. uh, so I kind of reshaped my business and I realized that I can really bring value and information uh, about uh, digital nomad, remote work world, and as a you know, destination to give people more opportunities uh, to share with them information about countries I'm working with. So International Lifestyle Consulting was born. Okay, that's a lot to unpack. So let's go back and I'm going to ask you a few questions about different stages along the way. Uh, so every single time you changed your career and you immigrated or you transferred to a new country, were you going back to school also? Uh, I wish that I would have opportunity. Uh, it's what I'm telling my children and I learn when you're young and when you <laughs> when you have a time. Uh, e e e so obviously I learned at school. I was a good student. I, I finished university. And even uh, during my university, I started already to work on different professional backgrounds. So yeah. I've had this kind of multitasking, I would say, aspect. But what has really moved me, it's uh, life pushed me. When I moved to one country, I should have started from zero. And I was looking to, you know, uh, what I can do. So when you, immigration experience and digital nomad experience completely different. At least mm -hmm. it was. Because okay. when we were moving first immigration, we were without passport, without money, without language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Only education and only our desire and understanding that we need to survive. It's what was moving me probably uh, in every each of my transition. Uh, so, yes, uh, I, I was taking courses. I didn't have time for other university, but all my life I'm taking some courses or I'm, mm -hmm. uh, you know, learning as I'm moving. Uh, yes, it's what I'm doing, learning from job, learning to start job and after then learning all the time. So if there was a job available, you were like, you know what, I, I can learn what I need to be able to do this job well. Not exactly. <laughs> like saying, like in Israel, usually, yes, it, it needs to be opportunity. You're looking around. What is the market? What you can do? It's good if government, like some program can help you. It's what happened with me. Okay. Uh, like when we arrived to Canada, like no government program, nobody helping us. Um, so I, we were just looking around you know, what we can do, what, what is the market, what, uh, what opportunity can be open. And mm -hmm. uh, like I took short course and, uh, and after then another course started to work and start was studying and looking for work at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's what happened with me. And with years moving from company to company, obviously you need to learn business of this particular company. Like mm -hmm. a lot of business specific and knowledge and um, maybe I, I'm curious person by myself but uh, it's only this way and it's what I would say uh, our listeners and even younger we coming to the different world so uh, it, you know the world when you had uh, like 30 years uh, profession and place you were working for almost disappear you need to be ready to adjust to change and to grow hmm. yeah uh, do you feel like the engineering background that you had and that period that you had in the finance uh, sector has helped you with your IT support jobs? I think that engineering background, even I'm, I kind of didn't work a lot and not so liked it when I was studying. It was, it's what shaped my perception. It's a logic. It's a, it's a good base. 
and all my other experience were built on the good base. So okay. financial uh, experience like work, which I, I, I had experience working with people, it's very important, from different background, different language. Uh, it, it's like additional layer and travel, it's additional layer and IT consulting, it's additional layers. So all these layers, I think, uh, shaped me to come to the stage where I am today. This is a very interesting story. And I want to dive in a little bit more into uh, your, was it a travel agency or were you like giving tours? So when I started my uh, travel passion company, I was small travel agency, solopreneur uh, as a travel agency. And obviously I was already working online we didn't, I didn't have the terminology work from home at this time, but right. actually it's already started to be work from home. I was taking online courses. I was doing kind of online exams. Uh, I started to build my understanding and I didn't know how marketing is working. So learn how to do business because actually to be traveler and to have travel business is two different things. <laughs> and right. so when I opened International Lifestyle Consulting, I'm not travel anymore per se, but tours are kind of part of the services. One of the services I'm offering. So I kind of, uh, I know how to do it. I know how to advise. I have my connection, but I understood a year ago that travel will be shuttered for some time. And by the way, in Canada, we still kind of confined and we don't have reliable flights and it will take time till actual travel will take off. Of course. But I have my tours and small groups or even couple can benefit from my tours. But my main um, service now, it's one-on-one -on -one consulting for people who are looking for relocation places, part-time or full-time. Right, right. And tours are helping people to get more information about mm -hmm. the place, to feel how they match this particular place. So before March of 2020, did you have a storefront business and then you were also learning and doing some things from home or were you already working from home before the pandemic started? No, as a travel uh, business, I was working from home. I was independent okay. from home uh, okay. travel consultant and I mm -hmm. was IT consultant who was working in the office, in different oh, okay. offices of Toronto. So well, I had this uh, mix. So when I... And I was commuting every day, sometimes three hours, because commute is crazy wow. in, in Toronto. So when I get this time to work uh, at home, to spend, I really liked it. And I was always outgoing person. And I didn't spend so much time at home before, but I realized the benefit. It was necessity for all of us to be at home. And I'm still at home. But now I'm looking to get out. I mean, I need to travel, but it's something else. But I am <laughs> but with a home base. Yeah, no, I'm home. I would say I am internet based. My okay. idea to develop my business to be online and independent of the place I might find mm -hmm. myself in the future. So today okay. I'm in Toronto, but in two years I might be in different place. Right. So a lot of people that are working from home use different terminology to mean, you know, work from home usually means you're tied to a home office. Then you have the digital nomads who who travel, but like to move around from country to country generally. Uh, yeah. It could mean also within your own country, di you know, digitally yeah. working. It's uh, a lifestyle. And then the And then work from anywhere can have a few different connotations. It can mean that you work from home or from a co-working space or that you are a digital nomad is kind of a broader term. Uh, so what is your end goal? Are you hoping that you will be kind of traveling permanently or finding another place to settle down in the future? I cannot tell you exactly today, but one of my slogans actually of my business, freedom to live everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it's what my business built on because I understand for, the, for different people, different age, different background, different family situation, uh, there is no one recipe. That's why I'm offering, you know, uh, my consultation uh, to, to find, to help you to find what is a better, might work better for you and your particular situation. 
again, remote workers, I really kind of divided this group from the broad uh, term as digital nomad, because for mm -hmm. me, digital nomad, it's usually single uh, young or not so, or say young at heart people who are moving from country to country. They don't have the home base. Uh, they are okay to work and live in co-working, co-living places, which is okay. It's uh, office as well. It might be temporary office. It might be temporary organized from home, but it's a different people, slide with different mentalities, different goals. Mm -hmm. Remote workers for me, it's more uh, kind of, uh, family-oriented people, the people who have families, so they have different needs, like school, children, or even children are grown, university, or, you know, some other circumstances, health issues, we became more conscious about it. So uh, baby boomers, even their digital nomad lifestyle, you know, they have different pace, different speed of moving. Uh, so I'm taking in consideration all these uh, personal factors and, and other as well. And I feel, I believe that the world would be uh, not so easy travel, hope on, hope off as it was before. Mm -hmm. uh, we will be regulated. The travel borders will be exist, borders between uh, countries, not only travel borders. So we need to be grounded. We need to be aware of, you know, immigration rules, visa rules more than it was before so yeah. there is my point there's some strict there's some new strict rules that we didn't have to deal with in you know not even just two years ago but also you know it was even easier to travel i think 30 years ago 50 years ago um in some ways it might be more expensive it would be some expensive uh, you know, we haven't information about digital nomad visa, you know, in this country, in other country for time, for time being, world is moving to this direction. But how exactly it would be? I believe it would be more regulated. So people need to do or more research or to be aware, to be better prepared, you know, for the even next year to be in this other country to understand what, you know, circumstances might be and try to to deal with them in advance mm -hmm. if possible. you don't want to get caught without your visa you don't want to get exactly. caught without, without your visa without tax preparation without financial preparation mm -hmm. uh without uh, really having uh, more information about country you are moving to right because majority mm -hmm. of people they they look only on nice pictures in the internet but life inside country it's not only nice mm -hmm. pictures there are some different aspects to be considered yeah and in every country, there's going to be the good areas, the good people. And then in every country, there's always going to be the areas you might want to avoid. And also, you know, the things on the internet you might want to avoid. Exactly. Um, I'm thinking about, you know, when I've traveled internationally uh, 20, 30 years ago, it was very common to have like, well, I guess it's 20 years ago, the internet cafes where you go in and yeah. you would log into a computer and you could use the internet. Now everything is Wi-Fi, but Wi-Fi is not always so secure. And I am concerned, you know, about my information being stolen from my computer and, and things like that. There would be a lot of ways that you'd have to have more, uh, like, to be more savvy. And I you don't know, know if the... That's why I think uh, um, co-working place became so popular because they specifically geared for people like you and as a digital nomad, they have better security, you know, firewalls and all preparation. Mm -hmm. They take in consideration threats of today time. And mm -hmm. it's very good because people, uh, like-minded people now have common uh, place, you know, to meet, mm -hmm. to brainstorm some ideas to work together or even, you know, everyone working on his own assignment, when you know that there is somebody, you know, next uh, door or close to you, like-minded, it gives you different sense of community and people don't feel so alone. It's another problem of digital nomad. In the internet cafes, and this is before people were just walking around with laptops everywhere. Um, you paid by the minute. You know, you paid to, you know, 10 minutes here and 10 minutes there it would really add up. And now some of those co-working spaces are international and you can have like a membership, I think, and have access to different ones as you travel. 
I think um, you, I can know that... rent, you can rent it for time, you know, for mm-hmm. week or for hours. All a month, they, yeah. They're pretty flexible. At least I know in uh, Portugal, in Mexico, and in other places, it's very convenient. It make uh, life of uh, remote workers, uh, digital nomad, uh, you know, more flexible because they paid for hours for the time they need. Uh, scheduling, uh, it's better than it was 10 years ago. I want to get a little bit of clarity on something. So you were working for uh, a company, you were an employee of a company, and you were in the past, you were traveling to work on site. Is that correct? For 20 years? I was independent IT consultant, even my last 20 years. Oh, really? I was working on site, uh-huh. Like the work that the, usually I was working, you know, for ministries, for big organization, they didn't provide a contractor. I was so opportunity to work from home. It was okay. parks only for their own employees. So I usually was working, not usually, 99%. Even when I was working to say international airport in Toronto, I was working on site. I shouldn't mm-hmm. be on site. Uh, so I was commuting uh, back and forth. Um, this time it's different. So I really know uh, good, you know, um, office environment in big uh, companies and organizations. Mm-hmm. You know and, it all. <laughs> and, and, and enjoy my time at home. I know pros and cons of each of I, I, I can I can sense that. Uh, did you... Did you say that when the pandemic started that your IT consulting job stopped or did you have any opportunity to do some of that work from home remotely? You said you had two offices out of your home. Uh, my my uh, contract was, uh, yes, uh, interrupted. And for some time I was looking for new one. It was kind of, you know, a couple of months of uh, confusion in everyone. But uh, when um, probably I've had this entrepreneurial entrepreneurial spirit in me, so when I understand that me uh, world is changing, and I can thrive and I can do something and I can something to offer people, because actually nobody do what I'm offering. Like my uh, business and consultant services are unique. Uh, one of the kind, and it took all my time and taking all my time. I understood that I would not be able to do even to work remotely from home, you know, for one job full time. And for other one, it's a, it's a startup business now kind of in this modality. Yeah. So I'm fully immersed in it. I noticed that you said, uh, in the form that you filled out before the interview that you are working currently about 60 hours a week. Is that right? Uh, I was uh, maybe not exaggerated, but, but yes, I'm not counting my time. Even I'm trying to have this life work balance and organize myself, but sometimes um, I'm so passionate about my work and I so like it. And I'm and the issue I'm connecting uh, with people online all over the world. And sometimes our time, you know, it's not matching. And for me to speak uh, with Australia or with Europe, uh, it's really, you know, my weekends and my evening hours might be taken for this particular uh, uh, reason. And uh, today marketing, you know, to be startup, uh, as I'm considering still myself, uh, and to pave the new direction, it's not so easy. So, and Mm -hmm. I'm doing a lot of work myself. I understand, though, because it can be, you know, you're kind of in a new passion area. And so as you're growing something, you're you're researching, you're learning, you're developing yourself, you're learning new skills, and it's time consuming, but it's also kind of fun because it's new. Um, as things settle down, like say one year in the future, let's say that you've got some something established now what would be your ideal week what would you like to be doing and how many hours would you like to be working you know what I don't uh, have uh, such a big plan now because life and I was always you know planning I was type of person to plan my future at least months couple of months what uh, life uh, teach me last year I'm planning now only for next couple of uh, weeks (laughs) or months because I've had my, um, I was planning to be in Mexico uh, this uh, winter, and I've had plan itinerary. I was working uh, for several months to visit seven places of expat living in here and there. 
it was canceled several times. My ticket was canceled and uh, borders were shattered and it's still not clear when I can do it. I have yeah. now another plan to go to Europe because actually my business cannot thrive. I feel uh, I, I need to develop new connections. I have new connections, but I need to visit these places. I need to, uh, to meet play people you know, on, uh, on site, as I say. Uh, so you know. I would like to visit Bulgaria, Montenegro, Albania and develop more connections connection for, for people. I have already invitation to be in Belize, in, uh, Panama, Nicaragua, and people waiting me in Mexico. But, you know, I, I will see, I still didn't get second uh, vaccine. So not mm -hmm. all depends on me. It's how our government or other government, you oh, know, yeah. allowed us to do. But uh, speaking about my future, uh, I see myself moving out of Canada. It's actually one of the reasons I started this business uh, because I started to look what other opportunities uh, uh, I might have. And uh, I realized it's not only my idea. Some other people looking for options uh, to live and retire. So that's why I, I do research about many countries, I would say, of my interest. I don't know exactly in what country it would be. And I hope uh, like my ideal lifestyle to have opportunity to live in different countries, like one winter, say in Mexico, another winter, say in Balkan, maybe another time in Colombia, but I will see how it's going to work. And at the same time to have my place in uh, Toronto. But you okay. know, there is a dreams and there is a reality. Yeah. And I'm working based on circumstances. You're kind of testing out the waters for your own clients too you want to know the people and the places that you're recommending and exactly i'm know. not sending people to places which i don't know or people like local uh, professionals which i don't have relationship with so in mexico i like i have already place in mexico i i know uh, riviera maya like i have my place and i know people uh, uh, in in this area and different areas of mexico uh, I have my contact in Central America, but, you know, once in a while, anyway, I, I need to visit them. And actually one of my passions, which I didn't mention yet, it's communities, because I believe that people, uh, digital nomads, uh, retirees, remote workers, uh, when they move into new place, they can thrive and actually survive when times are bad, only when you live in community or ex expats, or other like-minded people. That's why I'm looking for communities where people can land on and live for some time or maybe take a rest and a relaxation for uh, next time. So safe, reliable places to live, work, and retire. I feel like some of the baby boomers that I've known, uh, some of them are very tech savvy and have kept up with the times and have learned along the way just as much as we have. And not that I know very much, but <laughs> I'm learning some. Um, and then some of them, you know, are very disconnected and living kind of, um, you know, set back a few years, you know, maybe, uh, maybe they have a, a phone now and a smartphone, but it's still a struggle. Um, can you talk a little bit about what that's like to work with specifically that retirement generation? What I can tell you, whatever I'm offering, uh, my ideas uh, and my worldview, it's not for everyone. Mm -hmm. And it's what I would uh, let people know in advance as well, because many people are dreaming, you know, about happy retirement, dream lifestyle. The question, are you ready? People don't know about it. And, that's why I would say that my uh, target auditory, it's professionals or people with some uh, travel background or people who had already experience on living, working in different countries because uh, these people have different worldview, different skills, you know, to live in different culture in different country. It's actually skills. It's whatever yeah. you get, uh, uh, you know, over the life. And uh, yes, there are many baby boomers uh, with rich experience, tax savvy, all very educated in their particular niche. So they can take on this, you know, technical skills. Maybe it will take a little bit more time uh, versus young people, but it's, uh, it's doable, I would say. Mm -hmm. But they can compensate with other knowledge and experience they have in, you know, in their areas. 
and probably there are people who would not move any anywhere. It's a life that they prefer to have. So it's okay. <laughs> Uh, what about language acquisition? I I know that people always say, oh, it's best to learn when you're young. And I even look at my own kids and I'm like, I wish that I would have made more opportunity for them to learn more languages at a young, young, young age. And now, you know, they are 10 years old and, you know, nine years old and, and five years old. And I'm looking at them and I'm like, well, now is the, you know, now is better than never. Um, and they are interested in um, you know, studying Spanish and, and Chinese right now. But um, I have also known people who have gone and picked up and moved to another country. Uh, I knew these people that moved to, where did they go? Uh, Europe, it was Hungary. And um, Hungarian is a difficult language to learn. And they were in their mid fifties, maybe early sixties. And they were having to learn. They stayed for many years. Um, but some of these languages are hard. Do you feel that it's that English is enough to get people through, or do you feel like people need to be trilingual in this? First in this of all, era? I, I speak three languages. Yeah, and I have I a feeling. Wish, <laughs> and I wish actually three and a half. <laughs> and I understand, <laughs> and because I know Russian, I, I don't speak, but I understand Ukrainian, I understand uh, Belarusian, I'm kind of more and less good with uh, Bulgarian, like Slavic languages. Uh-huh. Mm, uh, so uh, my uh, perception and my advice to you the earlier your children will start to learn different languages the better for them yeah. because it's not only languages it developed you know brain perception of life every language it's a window or door to the different culture to the different right. mentality so it, it's a treasures and I can tell you that uh, we, even we moved from country to country at home uh, I was pressing my children to speak Russian even I'm not ethnically Russian because I know it's rich culture. I know yeah. it's one of the best literature so far, like classic literature. And I, you know, read many other books, but I read it, it's a rich culture. Why not mm-hmm. to give people this opportunity? Children. At the same time, people learning uh, later on in their life, as I did when I moved to Israel, I didn't know I was pushed to learn Hebrew. Oh, wow. Obviously, it would have been better for me to learn it uh, early in the life. When I moved to Canada, like I, I've had some, you know, school level language, which I forgot. I started to learn from the beginning. Immersion is good. It's really mm-hmm. good. But if you give your children uh, languages uh, from young age, it's easier. It's already proven by scientists. Don't afraid they would be confused. They might be confused for some time, but they have this uh different schemas of how language is used so people are different language are different by the way speaking about hungary i really like hungary i like budapest but i'm not offering hungary because i know how hungarian language is one of the really hard languages to to pick on Mm -hmm. and that's why i'm myself not going to hungary because i understand my limitation I prefer to learn Spanish <laughs> rather than yeah. Hungary. And it's what I uh, would uh, kind of share with my customers. Like if you have already some background, okay. And speaking about English, like people say, okay, but there is a, a lot of travelers like in Budapest, uh, expats uh, uh, or digital nomad, you can speak uh, English only. First yeah. of all, yes, you can speak. If you're coming only for two, three weeks, it's okay. If right. your intention to live in country and understand the culture and people, my friends, you need to speak <laughs> language. At Get ready. Somehow. First yeah. of all, people would accept you differently. Secondly, you need to speak with government uh, bureaucrats, uh, like employees. They right? don't need to, to speak uh, uh, English. You need to speak uh, language of this country. It's mm-hmm. your responsibility, mm-hmm. not their responsibility. You are lucky if they speak. Or say in Mexico, people know. But again, here I can advise in what areas people are speaking English with all respect and then what yeah. languages you can need. You need to start to learn Spanish in advance. It's my yes, advice. Yes. So something funny just happened. Um, my alarm clocks are going off to remind me to start this interview with you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about time zones for a minute. <laughs> yes. Um I had a I had a mistake this week. Um Emily and I arranged that we were going to do this uh at 
a.m. Eastern time. She's in Toronto and something happened a week ago. I have a sister who moved across the country. So I had a sister who was in Eastern time zone. And I think around the time that she moved, something switched to my brain and I forgot what time Eastern time zone was. And so I arranged this meeting um, for the wrong time. And then she asked me to correct it by moving it an hour earlier. And see, there goes my alarm. I just can't get them to stop. I had so many reminders to be here for this meeting. Um, and, and I guess, so Arizona is confusing because we don't observe daylight savings time. And then the rest of the country does. And so half of the year or part of the year, you know, we're three hours behind and part of the year we're two hours behind. Mm -hmm. And I've actually have been kind of proud of myself for being able to keep track of all these different time zones, not just in the States, but also the time difference between Arizona because we don't change and everyone else does. Yeah. But I'm also hosting, um, I host an international Zoom for some professionals in the, um, it's kind of funny, the balloon industry, actually. Um, not funny, but like, it's fun. <laughs> uh, but we have people from Australia, New Zealand. Um, we've had people from Germany and the UK and then all over the United States. And I have been able to keep track of all of these time zones and they even change the clocks at different times of the year. So I have to know when is Australia changing and New Zealand changing separate from the USA. And I botched it today. I, I was ready to be, I was ready to have a, this meeting hour late or an hour earlier. We, we, I ended up changing the meeting time, I think three times. So Emily, thank you for being patient with me. And I apologize. I have muted my phone and I just cannot get my alarms. It's to stop. okay. It's a, one of the challenges <laughs> of our time. The challenges are the technology not always reliable. And I notice uh, that sometimes I set up appointment even with uh, like today with a lawyer, like with some organization and it didn't come through and uh, email bounced uh, back. So I believe for some time it will be this period of adjustment. Right. And we need to check. Uh, it's what I do now, like in advance, day in advance, I'm checking my schedule. If I get all links, you know, if all is okay, just to avoid some uh, confusion as I did with you, uh, you or trying, yes, uh, or trying, trying to be organized and to do, you know, whatever I can, uh, because uh, internet sometimes it's not reliable. Many people today using internet at the same time and um, uh, we yeah. need to consider it. Yeah, I mean, technology definitely allows us to do things that we never could have imagined. Having a meeting with you in Canada when our borders are closed, it's amazing. Yes. But our internet, you know, can be a little spotty. Uh, you know, it can, I think that as long as people do their best, they, you know, we, we try to have the fastest internet as we can have, you know, to have a good experience. But when something is a little bit sticky, it doesn't work perfectly. I think that we just have to be, you know, gracious. You know, you, you were very gracious to close, towards me. <laughs> to close all other applications, it's what I did mm -hmm. now. I uh, closed okay. all applications I have on my desktop. Yeah. Uh, I didn't restart it. I didn't want to lose you completely. Uh, but I can only note that, unfortunately, uh, uh, infrastructure, internet infrastructure in the United States and Canada in some places are behind uh, other small countries. I can tell you in the travel and maybe you notice it. So uh, I hope it will pick up. I don't know when mm -hmm. it became very expensive say in Canada, but it's not always yeah. reliable. By the way, right. I have fiberglass, like the best internet uh, connection as well. Right. Uh, usually I don't have problems, but you know, oh, yeah. once uh, in a while. What, why do you think it is that some of these countries have even better internet and internet infrastructure than we do in these countries you know i noticed being in costa rica that on some islands i have excellent connection better than uh, like telephone and internet better than i've had to, in downtown toronto uh, wow. with all respect you no know, maybe because downtown like a lot of big buildings right uh, it, it's a different topics but i think uh, that first world countries were for last year so sure that they best in everything that they stopped to develop in the speed <laughs> required that's why you. you know chinese or even some small countries look what estonia is doing 
small country who are, you know, digitally more advanced than many big countries in the world. Look what other countries are doing, like Israel, like it, technologically and internet wise and you know the the things are much better over there for years so it should be kind of honest evaluation of what's going on and uh, north america should come to competition and and and, and be better in this regard I guess I can see that too, you know, you said that sometimes we just think that we're the best and then we stop, but there's also sometimes fear with, you know, these advances, like, you know, this is uncharted territory. Some, some people are worried about 5G networks and, you know, how can that affect our health? And I think that it's valid because it is uncharted to, to experiment and to learn and to watch and to, you know, be cautious about some of these changes. But I wonder if that's another one of it is just that there's so much pushback you, you know, know about what? installing the towers and things. I, I'm thinking that even with 4G uh, technology, North America c- cannot do much better. Yeah. Because 5G, really, we don't know. But with 4G, we're not going to the standard of 4G. It might be written on our phone, but actually infrastructure is not picking up. And okay. many small countries using the same 4G and they're providing better services like internet connection. Mm-hmm. And as I always, even I, I'm saying my children and I'm I'm not typical North American, I always learning. And it'll, in the moment you think that you are the best, the most smart, educated, advanced, you already stopped. Right. Because I come as- <laughs> always something to learn. And mm-hmm. other people, like from other cultures, they, you don't need to be very rich. You just need to have your correct uh, mindset and understanding and learn all your life. Be open to the new. <laughs> I interviewed someone a few weeks ago. Um, he was episode 26. So quite a few episodes ago, 15 ago, um, who was in South Dakota. No, North Dakota. He works for the North Dakota government and it's farmland. It's like badlands. It's um, it's very barren in North Dakota, and apparently they are very forward thinking in their infrastructure for internet. Very well connected, even in the farmlands. Um, so I guess it is just more a matter of you know what are your priorities. You have mentioned a few times that you have children. Can you talk a little bit about these? Uh, other family members, how do they feel about you wanting to have this big travel lifestyle or possibly relocate in the future? Uh, my children are adults. <laughs> my youngest are uh, graduating from the college next year, hopefully. Uh, for the last year or two, she was uh, studying from home, moved back from campus, and I hope in September uh, it will be opportunity for her to go back and at least yeah. to have you know, normal student life uh, on campus. Mm, at this point, um, I think they more uh, maybe affected to, by COVID and by current situation versus me, maybe because I, I'm more experienced in life and I've had several immigrations. I don't know why, uh, but um, for them, my ideas about relocation and about my lifestyle uh, I would say they're not very supporting me they they kind of afraid that I would fail you know for some scams or or stuff like that uh, but from other side you know I, I'm pretty practical and I am explaining them as it with uh, cost of living in Canada in our area and with all changes which is coming to economy into our uh, life in general, um, I don't see how I would be able to survive financially. And I don't know how they would be able to survive financially. But mm-hmm. everyone needs to get his own experience. And I don't say yeah, like, you can do it tomorrow. Uh, I'm trying to be prepared. I'm still looking on you know, opportunities, what's going on. But it's became really hard for young generation, you know, Mm, to get their own home, eh, specifically in big city, to find the uh, place in in workplace, uh, you know, with all these challenges. And uh, from my side, I would like to give my children more opportunities to live in different countries. By the way, they speak in several languages. 
my my oldest uh, she she was uh, graduating from French immersion show, so she's speaking uh, English, French, Spanish, and Russian, thanks wow. to me. Uh, and my youngest, less degree, but they have um, from this perspective at least I prepared them. Uh, but um, it doesn't mean you need to go to Russia. I'm not saying, yeah. but you can communicate with people, and you can find people from different background in different places, and make you know connection with them. It's what I'm about. Or even uh, for your work opportunities, the fact that you could be a translator, like if there was a difficult phone call that came in and someone needed help, even if that's not your area of expertise. Um, you know, you could step in and help in, in, in those circumstances. And I tell my children, I said, it could open up some of your job opportunities. The more languages you know, the more opportunities you can have, I feel. Yes. Uh, by the way, my youngest uh, was very fond about uh, Japanese language in high school. Mm-hmm. And she started to learn and she was very successful. And I was so happy. And I told her like, oh, you might have opportunity. And she's working like with animation. It's how she started uh, and TV movie production. It's, it's such a good, you wow. might have, you know, work opportunity to work in Japan or, you know, with Japanese technology. Uh, but somehow, I don't know, they're losing it uh, along the road. But maybe uh, I found that um, North American children, um, they kind of less uh, proactive, I would say, like in general. I, even I don't like, uh, you know, over generalization. But, you know, I'm communicating a lot from um, young people, younger than me, I would say, uh, from uh, Latin America, from Eastern Europe, from Asia. They, they are active, they are looking for opportunities. Obviously, mm-hmm. there are such uh, young people I- I- in North America, but looks like uh, majority of people lived very comfortable life here and still living. That's why they kind of more dreaming than, you know, <laughs> attempting yeah. to, to change something. Uh, I'm different. And uh, look, five years ago, I, I didn't consider that I need to move to a different place. Three years ago, I get this idea and I started to work even before COVID. And now the more I'm looking on what's going on around me and I don't like it, the more I'm thinking about what kind of opportunities I have. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's talk a little bit about um, your home office situation. You have mentioned that your daughter is also studying from home. Um, How many people do you have in your household right now? Uh, we have three generation, three people, me, my daughter, and grandma. Each okay. of us has computer. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> and we have enough uh, rooms, uh, places, you know, to, to divide our offices when we need it. So mm-hmm. it's, there is no problem of space. Um, uh, even I think that I organized uh, my space, my room better than they. Uh, because like uh, maybe I'm different school and I understand that I need to have a ground, I need to have good uh, lighting. I even purchase additional like light uh, stand uh, at evening to work uh, for me. Uh, and mm-hmm. I have like several lamps. You probably don't see now there is no difference between there is a day and I'm sitting in front of big window. Mm-hmm. Mm, it's where my office is. Uh, I have printer, like I have for, I think, what uh, all what I need, telephones, uh, cell phone, landline. I have landline just in case, and it's uh, very convenient. At least at home, I have this uh, option. Mm-hmm. Um, my daughter has her, like, uh, <laughs> her tools she's working with. She's working on uh, TV production, so she's using her uh, software from college and whatever she needs. So no problem. And when you started working from home, what did you start with? Was it a bare minimum or have you just been, did you already have some of these tools? No, I purchased them. Like uh, before, like I've had my office, but small one, I would say in different room, in a bedroom, a smaller place. Uh, But uh, now when I'm full time, uh, working on my business online, I moved to the first floor, to the bigger room, I made the door, I, I, I purchased, uh, like I have more lighting, different setting, 
uh, the same uh, chair, but, um, uh, and I like to look professional. I mean, it's what I'm telling to my daughter. You need to look, um, you know, to be dressed up. Even you work from home, maybe for students it's differently, uh, but for professionals, uh, uh, video. Even, yeah, it, it should be, you know, distinguish point between your home life and your office life, especially if you work with people, you know, if you're working in, in, in service, uh, it's how I understand it should be. So before we got onto this video, I put lipstick on and I oh. put a shirt, I put a button up shirt on today. Yeah. Um, but that's about the extent of what, I mean, I'm wearing jeans. Uh, how about you? What do you do before you get onto a video call? No, really, I take care about my upper part more than yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wear jeans as well, which usually I didn't uh, wear jeans uh, to the workplace. I'm European only on yeah. Fridays, uh -huh. but now I can uh, be in sweatpants and jeans just between us. Uh, uh -huh. But no, upper part, uh, lipstick, mascara, it's a must. Yeah. Uh -huh. For me, I think it's part of my uh, business image and it's part of who I am. It's how I understand it should be right. in respect to me, in respect to people I'm speaking with. So eventually, yes, we are more relaxed now versus, uh, you know, physical office. Mm -hmm. But we need to, you know, to be dressed up and because it's not only dressing up M mentally, we're already in different mode. You know, when mm -hmm. you put your lipstick, when you prepared, when you put your short, you now at work. It, it's not, you know, very formal, but it's a different mindset. Mm -hmm. um, what about the people who are just starting to think about working from home or retiring um, abroad. So working abroad, I, I know that you're, you're more focused on the digital nomad and mine is a little bit more focused on just work from home, wherever you are, work from home. Um, do you have any specific advice that you'd like to share as a, as a broad, <laughs> as a broad yeah. thing? Uh, what I would say, if you're really considering or starting to think in direction of uh, working from uh, different places, especially in different countries, uh, try to be prepared in advance. Like, do whatever it's needed. Actually, that's why I created my business. What I mean in regards to um, working from home, uh, make this uh, correct habits working from home. Uh, but uh, start to build your business, online business, or, you know, entrepreneurship uh, business. Uh, some things that you would be independent from, you know, big companies, from your employee. You can do it at the same time you're working for employee. I understand that it's not mm -hmm. easy and it takes all time, you know, to grow your own business, to, to learn how to do it these days. And uh, I know that many baby boomers, actually, they're very active now. It's what I discovered. It's not only me. They're opening their businesses. Uh, they're coming from, you know, brick and mortar to online uh, work environment. They're very um, creative in this way, consulting businesses of many kind, um, even e-commerce businesses and others. So try to be independent, build your business, uh, think how you can, um, you know, teach yourself, uh, be open-minded and come to me when you're ready or considering, you know, uh, to plan uh, your next step uh, if you're looking for uh, other places and cultures where you can thrive, where you can uh, stretch your, um, you know, security check, your pension, uh, there's a lot of places with low cost of living uh, and with good infrastructure and with good people around, you need just to find them. Right. So if you are looking to retire and relocate, Emily is your person. If you're looking to relocate and work either part-time or full-time, she's also a great resource. If you are wanting to do like a semi-retirement and retire, but have a little bit of a side business and learn like an entrepreneurial thing, you know, e-commerce or whatever. She's also a good resource. Where are you learning most of your stuff? Where, uh, 
you said that you like to be part of communities. Uh, do you do you recommend any particular uh, resources? Well, first of all, I'm learning for, from internet. Yes, I took one online, several online courses last uh, summer, but it was for me. I mean, and after then, I felt that uh, I need something else. Kind of, I'm in a search. By the way, I'm found now another course in the United States. I'm part of. I'm part of several. Um, networks uh, which are providing different kind of presentations. And um, like I do my research in particular to my business and reading, uh, I think today you can find a lot of resources, but there is a challenge as well. It takes time yeah. sometimes and you need advice. Um, by the way, I started to um, uh, take my good uh, the first steps uh, which helped me from SCORE. It's volunteer program in the United States. I'm so happy that my American friend from Boston advised me to find this organization, SCORE. It's a very established, more than 50 years, uh, volunteer organization where people actually, CEOs and uh, entrepreneurs with many years of experience providing workshops and all kinds of help, mentoring, uh, for Americans, like I'm just participating in workshops and it's by free and I learn a lot and it mm -hmm. helped me a lot. So it's a, it's a good resource. Score. Well, how do you score. spell it? Uh, it's a, a score, S-C-O-R-E with dot in every state, American state, there is a chapter of score. I happen to be only in Massachusetts and I was so happy to find all a lot of online classes, um, uh, webinars, mentoring, mentoring from the best uh, professional and educational, you know, uh, powers in the United States. So you and you can do it online from your state, and you can select other states. It's what I really? learned. But I'm now moved from score to my specific direction. Okay. I actually don't think I've ever heard of it. You might be the first guest who's mentioned that one. Sounds good. I'll have to look into it. Um, and if people were to want to find you, Emily, where would they find you? It's very easy. Uh, my website is the same as my name, Emily Braun, just together. Uh, as you see my logo, uh, emilybraun.com. Uh, there's a website for international lifestyle consulting, and there is um, a lot of information, by the way, I provide uh, free ebooks and details about consultation and my unique know yourself questionnaire, which can be uploaded in advance on my consultation page. I'm also on uh, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, where I'm working uh, mostly myself uh, now and YouTube. So just... Uh, mm, you know, put the uh, Emily Braun and you will find me. And it's E M I L Y B R O N dot com dot com. Okay. What do you have on your YouTube channel, Emily? Uh, YouTube channel, I have, uh, I'm just started uh, actually in the preparation for my travel because I need to travel and I would be traveling uh, to Mexico, to Central America, to uh, Balkan, to Europe. Um, so for now, it's mostly my podcast, like being guest on a different podcast. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I hope when I will arrive to my destination countries, it will be a lot of original content because I'm planning to speak with people, with expats who live in for a long time in the places, or maybe uh, who arrived recently uh, to show in what uh, you know places they are living, what is environment. Uh, and to ask them questions about their well-being. And uh, I, I feel it will be a lot of interesting, um, like a lot of information and encounters. And uh, it would be also valuable for everyone who is looking for this kind of information. Thank you so much, Emily, for coming today. Uh, do you have any last words? Anything that you wanted to mention that we didn't get to? I think there are still a lot of topics we can uh, share and develop. Uh, obviously, we just touch on some of them. And the more information I receive, the more kind of topics I can uh, add to my repertoire, I would say. Uh, I started to work 
uh, recently in remote work uh, direction, uh, actually looking for connections and companies who providing remote work opportunities online okay. or in different countries. Because I understood it's what uh, many people already looking or would be looking uh, soon. It's actually right. uh, companies for Americans, Canadians who are looking uh, for different work uh, options, remote work options in uh, different countries. Uh, it's what I do kind of my new direction. Um, okay. But at the same time, uh, be open, be prepared, start to work from home, start your own business if you can, or develop your existing skills to the mm -hmm. point that you can manage it myself. Be prepared to the new world because it's already coming. Yes, yes. So if you also provide services to help remote workers find a new job, people who want to remote work but haven't yet or looking for new opportunities. Emily's looking to collaborate with you. I'm more for organization. Uh, I think at this point, I'm only alone. I'm At this point, I'm only alone and I'm trying to do, you know, a lot of uh, tasks, but I, I'm trying to help people to navigate them, you know, to, to the companies. Mm -hmm. So if you're a small entrepreneur and you're looking, by the way, for virtual assistant or for some accounting help or, you know, some uh, professional uh, uh, service you need to develop your business or to extend to different countries, I can help. And I'm not work agency. I'm not, you know, just no. <laughs> understand me correctly. Okay. I, I'm just trying to help uh, if I can. So we, you can point people to those organizations. Yes. Got it. Yeah. I think that's also an area that I am not equipped to handle is actually helping people source a specific job, but I'm definitely willing to help point people into the direction of the places that specialize in that. Yeah. So, all right. Thank you so much, Emily. We appreciate you. And I hope that we can continue our conversation again sometime soon. Um, well, this has been April Malone with Emily Braun, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. When I will have new information from my destination country, I will connect with you again and update yes. you on my finding. Okay. All right. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.